What is the best Necromancer build this season? Who get left behind? And why does Blizzard hate Summoner Necro so much? We're going to go from the D to the S tier with one hidden S plus tier build that we'll talk about at the end. Beginning with the D tier, Summoner Necromancer. It can clear tier 100 dungeons, kill every Uber and also Uber Lilith. Yet, in comparison to the speed of the other builds, it is the slowest. That being said, for your personal level experience and also level speed, Summoner Necromancer is still one of the fastest ones until level 70, 75. Then it starts slowing down, but until then, unparalleled leveling speed into slow endgames, multipliers not multiplying, being forced to play Ring of Mandalon and Axefelds to then finally make Summoner good again. If you're an absolute enthusiast, we have the build though for you to clear every content solo. Well, with your boys, but so, so, solo. Now this gets followed up in the C tier by our friend, the Blood Surge Necro. Now, Blood Surge only C tier that... <clears throat> Pony, that's a bit harsh. Blood Surge is incredible for leveling 1 to 100. You're flying through. Tier 100 dungeons are being obliterated. And you can kill every single Uber boss, also Lilith, but... In general, your clearing speed with Blood Surge versus bosses, no matter what you do, will always feel a bit... Mm. It's just a simple matter of fact that Blood Surge gets stronger the more opponents are there. Yes, Blood Surge reads in the description that its damage multiplies the more enemies are being Blood Surged. Therefore, only one opponent, less damage, pain. Now, the robot did help with resource support to essentially continuously refill what we're doing with the blood surge still it will always have this boss lacking problematic which also might throw it back in the gauntlet leaderboard then in the end which brings us into the b tier and two necromancer builds yes two these are two shadow builds one is the giga dot with Xfelds. you can boost your minion tremendously and have the Xfelds corroded signet with shadow damage do crazy critical strikes on the other hand we have the blood wave necro which shoots waves of poop shadow blood waves at your opponent and with the cooldown reduction being nigh close to zero on that blood wave you're just zooming blood wave zooming blood wave zooming blood wave incredible kills even the tier 100 butcher without a single struggle problem with every shadow build is what if the boss is moving <laughs> because you're putting shadow damage over time on the ground and you're fighting one of these pesky bosses that just wanders around or whatsoever it's annoying if there's the one that stands still, like one of those trees or the cows or abominations, no problem. You just nuke him into pieces, but that can be a big stopper in the gondola later for vaults, for leveling, for getting to the point. That is not a detriment. So if you don't care for the leaderboard or actually killing Uber Lilith, you can kill Uber Lilith, but she's kind of the epitome of running away and landing and running away and landing. And there's better builds to get that one killed for sure. Talking about those better builds, how about Bloodlands? But Bloodlands reimagined because we put Bloodlands together with a Black River. So now we have corpse explosions doing millions of physical damage while Bloodlands as a blood skill is not doing blood damage. Yeah, <laughs> idiots. No, Bloodlands is doing physical damage because that, like, there's no blood damage. Congratulations. So you have the maximum damage, Bloodlands, overpower critical strikes. Yes, overpower and critical strike. Hold up with Black River making insane corpse explosions, and that solved the one issue that Bloodlands always had, and that was clearing rooms. Because you could, sure, shoot out lances like crazy, and then they chain and do immense damage. But now, just one corpse explosion in between, poof, and whatever elite stands, 4 million, 5 million, 6 million, 10 million blood lances into their face, and they die. And the same goes for bosses, just getting them clapped. Now, next to that Bloodlands build, I want to position the Blight Corpse Explosion build. Same concept, but instead of overpower, we're using Blight to essentially pull things together and with Army of the Dead create tons of corpses, tons of corpses, and then focus maximum on the corpse explosion. We have seen up to 25 million corpse explosions, and I'm missing even the Shaco, the Harlequin Crest, to push this even further. One rank on my pants. There is a ceiling. Ring of Starless Skies would make this even more efficient. Going crazy with this build, having fun with a complete, never been there before Army of the Dead, Black River, Corpse Explosion, Necromancer. Now coming to the S tier, followed by the Super S tier. Sounds a bit cheesy, but there is just something to talk about. S tier is and stays Bonesmere. Bosses getting deleted. 
especially as soon as you have the ever knight and the genesis two of those stones it just it, it's silly how strong it gets with a damage bonus from there picking up any of the uber uniques ring of starless melted heart of Selic, grandfather bosses will die even faster and you can even pair this together with a bone spirit to add a shotgun to it to get a super bam on top and yes that works plenty well so bone spear but also bone spear spirit are two of the most fantastic S tier builds I've had the joy to play in all the past seasons. And if we're looking for the gauntlet, what do you need? Clearing speed, fast, instant damage, not damage over time, not waiting until someone dies. Bam, 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 bam. The boss moves, doesn't matter. Bone Spear moves as well. That's the big advantage over shadow builds because shadow builds, again, do the damage, then you wait for the damage to happen and <sighs> pain. Here, different though. Bone Spears in, Splinters, boom. Need to stand on the right distance so your Echoes and your Splinters are actually doing maximum damage. And then you just tear things into pieces. Absolutely crazy. Now, I finally would like to talk about the Super S tier. And a lot of you might have been able to guess what is coming. It is Bone Spear. <laughs> but it is Bone Spear new and interesting. Because in this build, we're focusing on Bone Spear together with Black River and the Maximum Corpse Explosion. That has many intriguing levels. Usually, you're just using Corpse Explosion and Bone Spear to produce Flesh Eater for the 40% multiplier, then generally the 9% multiplier for eating corpses and getting your Essence up that you always had 100% Essence value to just do the maximum amount of damage with your key passive. Now, we thought this a bit further and it was like, hmm... If our full corpse explosion black river works what if we're now using bone spear to make bonus corpses with the bone splinters because bone spear has a very high lucky hit chance of 70 percent partially and 70 percent against bosses lucky hit chance with 50 percent chance to make corpses it's a 35 percent chance i know a lot of math to always make corpses which leads to our black river just going bonkers now you have a bone spear that deals millions of damage, millions of damage. And that gets followed up with corpse explosions, which are also being scaled up incredibly high to bonus millions of damage. And here, truly the ring of starless skies just shines so much if you're able to pick it up, even without it, without a single uber unique. And that's the beauty about bone spear. It is incredible. Gotta pick up that black river, the ring of sacrilegious souls, and end of the day, the deathless visage and you're donezo you're good to go if you have the littlest wall that's nice but it would even work without the littlest wall this is tanky damaging zooming and can't simply be stomped and that's the good part if the gauntlet leaderboard turns out to be only tier 70 lower tiers not being so hard on the defense we can squeeze out even more damage out of the build and i didn't even talk about how good the bot actually is or bone spear because with resource support you're consistently every 0.8 seconds are getting bonus resource you're getting 20 resource every 0.8 seconds which allows you truly to stay at this 100 or 80 percent essence all the time because you're because your ossified key passive gives you more damage the more essence you have and if you're at 100 that's the most amount of damage bonus possible and surprisingly with this build, you're more or less always at that top there. You don't even have to spam like crazy anymore because now you just need one, two bone spears to kill one, two opponents. Then your first corpse explosion happens from Black River and then the second one, everything is dead. So you're solving your own essence issues by just doing even more. It's incredible and couldn't be more fun. Now there's even more builds than I mentioned here. And you can find them all in our Season 3 document linked in the description below with the Mobilitic links. I still have to add some because this build is completely new. But also the videos where we build this live so you get a flavor for would you like this? Would this be fun for you? And if you need general information about Diablo, there's also level methods, tips, how armor works, how items work, why are you dying in Tier 100 dungeons, Paragon boards broken down, we resource generation, and more. Which is your favorite Necromancer build this season? And do you agree with that Super S tier? And do you agree with this Super S tier thon? Now, if you're still struggling to beat tier 100 dungeons, here's a video of me beating one with only merchant gear in Codex of Power Powers. 
on top explaining how in-game equipment works.